I am working on some problems that use Gauss's law. And uh, I already did one for a solid sphere. And now I'm going to do a long, an infinitely long charged rod. And the rod has a radius of r and a charge in C rho. I can't give it a charge. It's got infinite charge, right? So it's got, if it's infinitely long, it's infinitely charged. So I know that's silly. But so just, just a, a brief recap. Uh, Gauss's law, it says that it's, it's kind of weird. It says that the, if you calculate the electric flux, and the electric flux is defined as the surface integral of E, the electric field, dot n hat, which is perpendicular to the surface area, over the area. Okay, you got to integrate over the whole area. Then that flux is going to be equal to the total charge, and this is actually closed flux for a closed surface. If you have a completely closed surface, then that's going to be equal to the total charge inside divided by epsilon naught. Now, in order to use this to find the electric field, you have to know something about the electric field. So you're cheating already. Okay, you have to know how to pick a shape such that this integral becomes trivial. So let's look at this charge rod, uh, and let's suppose that I'm looking at it head on, like that. Okay, so the rod's coming out of the page right here, and th there's charge, it's all charged. Uh, if I assume that the electric field points radially away from the rod, and, and I assume that the magnitude uh, is constant if you're the same distance away, then I can pick a surface to calculate. And so let's pick a surface that looks like this. I'm going to start on the outside, and then I'll do the inside. That's a terrible circle. And it's not even a circle because it's a, it's a cylinder. Okay, This is a cylinder uh, because I have to have a closed surface. I can't pick a circle. So if I, if I draw it over here, it looks like this. It's some, it has some radius r, and then it it's cuts that. It actually goes through. Yeah, and so that has a length l. So it's, a, it's an actual cylinder. So if I can calculate the electric flux on the surface of the cylinder, then I can use that to find the electric field. I'm going to assume that the electric field on this outer surface is always pointing directly away from the thing, so that n hat and e are in the same direction, and that E is constant. So if that's the case, I can actually break this in, I can find the flux. So the flux is going to be equal to uh, the integral of E dot n hat, n hat dA on that side, plus the integral of E, this is side, E dot n hat dA on the top, that's the top right up here, plus the integral of E dot n hat dA on the bottom. How do you even spell top, bottom? So that's my, that's, I have to do all three sides, right? I have to do the whole thing. I can't just do the side. So let's do the side first because that's the easiest. If E is perpendicular, I mean in the same direction as n hat, like I drew, I'm, I'm assuming that it is, then E dot n hat is just E. And if E is constant, I can bring that out. So this is going to be equal to the integral of E dA. Now let me, I guess I should go ahead and do these. On the top, think about on the top of here. If I assume this is an infinitely long, the electric field's that way. N hat is that way. It's perpendicular to the surface. So E dot N hat for the top equals zero because they're perpendicular. Same thing over here. N hat's that way. E is that way. So these two are zero. And then this is just going to be E times the surface area of a cylinder. And remember, if you think about, if I had a picture right here, if I unroll this, this is just a square, right, or rectangle, with the length of it being the circumference of the circle and then the uh, other length being L. So this is going to be E times the circumference, which is uh, 2 pi R times L. Now, I need to find the charge inside. That's going to be equal to Q inside divided by epsilon naught. How much charge is inside there? Well, it's this. This amount right here. So I could find the, if I know the charge density rho, I just need to find the volume of that thing right there. So that's going to be, remember, rho equals Q over V. 
So Q equals rho times V. So what's the volume of that piece of cylinder? So we have over here E times 2 pi R L. The volume, and this is going to be rho times the volume of that, which is going to be the area of the base pi R squared, I'm calling that R, capital R squared, times the length L. So that's the charge inside divided by epsilon naught. Now I just want to solve for E. Notice that the lengths cancel, yay, and pi cancels, and I get E equals rho r squared over 2 r epsilon naught. That's the outside electric field. Is that right? See, dun, 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 it cancels epsilon naught, 2 r, yeah. Okay, and this is, check, this has units of charge per cubic meter, and then I multiply this by meter squared, and I get charge per meter, and I divide by um, meters, I get charge per meter squared, divide by epsilon naught. So this has the same units as the electric field due to a point charge. That's good. Now let's do inside the sphere. That's not a sphere, it's a cylinder. So I'm going to pick a Gaussian surface inside the sphere of radius r, and everything looks the same. The flux is still the same in calculation. It's still zero flux on the end caps, and the flux on the inside is going to be e times 2 pi r l equals q n over epsilon naught. Now the only difference here is q n is going to be equal to uh, rho times the volume of this cylinder, which is going to be pi r squared times l over epsilon naught. So now if I solve this for E, E equals the pi's cancel, the L's cancel, and I get rho r squared over 2 epsilon naught r equals rho r over 2 epsilon naught E inside. And let's just check. Again, we have uh, coulombs per meter cubed times meters gives coulombs per meter squared divided by epsilon naught, same units as the electric field due to point charge. And do these two values agree when little r equals big R? If little r is big R, I get pi big R over 2 epsilon naught. Here, if I put big R right there, I get the same thing. So that's good. So that's the electric field due to a infinitely charged rod. And again, right, we cheated. I already, I already knew the direction. I already knew that the magnitude didn't depend didn't change as I move further away. So it's not fully finding the electric field, it's, it's, it's f finishing the electric field. Okay, so I'll do some more later, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I think I'd like to make some cool drawings, something like that, but I'll probably do some more electric Gauss's law problems, but hopefully that helps.